morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have a warming trend that continues through the next 7 to 10 days with above normal temperatures that does take us into next week. And then we turn our attention to severe weather potential increasing later this week, and that does include tornadoes. And then an active weather pattern will take us into next week with more heavy rain and possibly widespread severe weather. We'll get into those details later on in today's video. But looking here this morning at the weather pattern, we do see that Omega blocking pattern continue across the United States and much of North America. We have a trough out here across the West Coast and a stronger upper level trough here across portions of the East Coast. But in between, we have a ridge that does build into Southern Canada and the Great Plains across portions of the United States. And what this means is that we'll continue to see some cooler temperatures. And we are seeing that this morning. We are seeing temperatures into the 30s and 40s up here across portions of the Great Lakes and into the Northeast with some warmer, milder conditions down here into Texas. We're waking up into the middle and upper 60s, places like Dallas, Fort Worth, and then back toward the Abilene region. And you do see the wind chill values, though. Underneath those, those troughs, we have wind chills down into the 20s and 30s, especially across the Great Lakes region, places like Wisconsin, Michigan, getting into northern Indiana and Ohio, and that even pushes eastward into western parts of Pennsylvania this morning, but the milder air is not too far behind, and that is farther to the west, and you do see that with our high temperatures this afternoon will be into the 70s and the 80s across the Great Plains and the Pacific Northwest as well underneath that building upper level ridge but as we have that trough meandering across the Great Lakes in the northeast today we will have temperatures back again only into the 40s and 50s across much of those areas as we get into this afternoon but if you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America including southern Canada the United States and the tropics be sure to press the subscribe button down below it's free to do and you get all of these weather forecast videos each and every morning at 9 a.m. on this channel Channel, and it's also very important to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps out more than you know, so I definitely appreciate it. But going through today with the change in the weather pattern and with the heat building, we have more severe weather possible. It is a one out of five, so a lower end of on the scale for severe storms, but it is there. This is a marginal risk across southwestern Kansas, southeastern Colorado into the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle, and this even extends farther west into east. Eastern New Mexico today. So places like Amarillo, Lubbock, getting down to the Midland region could be seeing some feistier storms later on today. So timing this out, noon time frame, there's not too much to worry about. A quick sprinkle or shower is possible here into western Oklahoma. But other than that, very quiet across the southern plains. But as we get through peak daytime heating and into this evening, this is six o'clock this evening, we are starting to see some signs of a couple of thunderstorms firing up across eastern New Mexico and to the western Texas and Oklahoma panhandle here. And that's where we could start to see some storms producing hail and damaging winds. And those will continue to press on farther off to the east through the evening hours. Now, you do notice the coverage of these storms are low. So we have, again, widely scattered coverage. So not everybody will see these storms. But if you get under one of these, they definitely could produce the threat for downburst winds up to 60 miles per hour and some quarter size hail. So definitely watch out for that getting through late this afternoon and into this evening. But as the weather pattern continues to evolve through late this week that upper level ridge will continue to scoot on farther off to the east and get rid of this trough slowly but surely across the east coast by Thursday and I think by this weekend on Saturday we do see that upper level ridge really take off and temperatures will be soaring across the heartland of the country and you do see that so starting on Thursday temperatures will be back into the 70s not only for the Great Plains but the upper Midwest places that have seen cooler weather of recent the Twin Cities up here into Des Moines and even Chicago will be warming up into the 60s and 70s on your Thursday. That continues more or less on Friday, but look at the heat building down across the Southern Plains. We're into the middle 90s down here 
into much of north and central Texas and approaching 90 into Oklahoma City and Tulsa on Friday. And as we go into Saturday, we're into the 90s into Oklahoma and the portions of Texas into Louisiana and Arkansas and even pushing 90 there into Kansas by this weekend with those 70s surging all the way up into the northern plains, the upper Midwest and the Ohio Valley. But with that transition, we're talking more severe weather. So we have a level two of five on the scale in the yellow shaded color. This is the slight risk. This covers much of central Oklahoma, including Oklahoma City, Norman, Fort Sill, and Lawton, all the way down through Wichita Falls, west of Dallas-Fort Worth, getting down through the Abilene region, San Angelo, and even down toward the San Antonio region on your Thursday tomorrow. And the threats that these storms could bring are 60 mile per hour wind gusts from central Oklahoma down into central Texas. And we have to watch out for two inches or larger type of hailstones, especially from the Abilene area down to San Angelo and just west of the San Antonio region down here into west central Texas. We definitely could be seeing those golf ball size hailstones or larger. And we also have a tornado risk. This is a low end threat for tornadoes, but it is there across central Oklahoma and down into northwest Texas as far south as Wichita Falls on your Thursday. So looking at the setup for the storms on Thursday, dew points will be rising, returning out of the Gulf of Mexico into the 50s and low 60s, all the way up into Kansas, and that will contribute to moderate values of instability around 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilogram. This is thunderstorm food, so we'll definitely be able to take advantage of that through your Thursday. And we also have some organizing shear down here, especially into that slight risk zone into Texas, and that will organize some of these hailstorm potentials down here as we get towards Thursday afternoon and evening. So looking here Thursday morning, 6 a.m., getting off to work or school, we have a couple thunderstorms we could be seeing across the heart, uh, uh, heartland there of the Oklahoma City metro area. Other than that, these storms will be kind of losing their luster as they push to the east. If anything, these could be producing some small hail and some frequent lightning. I'm not too concerned about these. Then we'll get a break toward midday. We'll have the storms start to push off to the north and east and start to weaken into the Missouri Valley. Behind that, we'll be heating up, uh, dew points will be rising, temperatures will be rising, and that means the energy levels will be rising through midday. And then by the time we get toward late Thursday afternoon, 4 or 5 o'clock, and then into the evening hours, we'll start to fire up a broken line of supercell thunderstorms from southern Kansas, getting through central Oklahoma and west central Texas, west of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. These storms will be pay, uh, possible to produce more dam damaging winds, large hail and a couple of tornadoes through the evening hours and then those will push farther off to the east into eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas into east Texas getting toward that midnight time frame on your Friday morning. Then as we go into Friday the ongoing storms will be pushing east we got a marginal risk including Little Rock and Memphis into northern parts there of Mississippi and then another marginal risk from the Dallas-Fort Worth area down into San Antonio and just west of Houston going into especially your Friday morning time frame but these storms will be producing some heavy rainfall. So this is your total rainfall accumulation from today all the way through this weekend on Saturday, May 6th. And you see the heaviest of the rains falling across the lower Missouri Valley into central portions of Tennessee there toward Nashville, Springfield in Missouri there into the Memphis area. Those areas could be seeing an excess of an inch of rain, but definitely some beneficial rains where it does occur across Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, especially with that drought out there. But the concern is there for some flash flooding. I know it's dry out here, but if you do see a lot of rain in a short amount of time, there definitely could be some flash flooding concerns, which that marginal risk of flash flooding on Thursday into Friday across portions of Kansas, getting into eastern Oklahoma, Missouri, and portions of Arkansas, and then more heavy rain across the Pacific Northwest we'll have to watch out for there into Washington State, Oregon, getting down into California, Nevada, and Idaho for some flash flooding later on this week. And then a more organized threat for flash flooding across Middle Tennessee could occur around the Nashville region as we head towards Friday into Saturday. So we'll definitely be watching that in portions of Tennessee during that time frame. But as we go into next week, it is all about the upper level ridge. Our first real heat wave of the season, especially for the Great Plains and much of the eastern two-thirds of the country, definitely seeing those well above normal temperatures. But across the west coast, we got another strong trough moving in as we 
we go into next week, and this is going to be the focal point for storms as this trough moves across the eastern United States and interacting with some of this warmer air, it's going to be bringing some more showers and storms, and these could be severe, especially when you put above normal precipitation over top of the heat out here, so definitely something to watch. And speaking of the heat, going on Monday, May 8th, we are seeing many more areas into the 80s, including St. Louis, getting up into western Illinois, 90s down here into Texas on Monday. Tuesday, much of the same. Um, uh, copy and paste this into Tuesday. And then even into Wednesday, much of the same uh, areas into the 80s and the 90s, with the 90s more favored across the southern and southeastern United States, getting into the middle of next week. But we definitely have to watch the uh, potential for severe weather. The Dew points will be rising out of ahead of an ejecting trough early and middle portion of next week, all the way up into southern Wisconsin, southeastern Minnesota, and Iowa here. We will be seeing dew points well up into the 60s, some 70 degree dew points down here across the Arklatex. That does continue into Tuesday. So there is some concern for building instability. And look at the instability reservoir as we go into early next week, building all the way up into the Missouri Valley, the upper Midwest, and the western Ohio valley and real strong values being shown here from texas on up there into missouri so definitely something to watch getting into early next week and a favorable zone for shear we have mid-level jet stream over top of that ridge so we could be dealing with some ridge rider type of com complexes of storms during the early part of next week so this is your monday morning we have some showers and storms breaking out across the twin cities down through wisconsin northern parts of illinois down into the lower ohio River Valley these storms could be capable of producing some damaging wind and some hail, but I'm not too concerned about an organized severe weather threat going into Monday morning. It's more so into Monday evening. Over top of this ridge, remember, we're going to have a stronger mid-level jet and a lot of instability building across portions of the country there. So we definitely have to watch from portions of the Midwest down through the Missouri Valley and the Southern Plains for more of a widespread severe weather episode going into Monday evening early on next week. Week. Then we get rid of those storms slowly but surely into Tuesday morning and we do it all over again, but maybe just a little bit farther to the east and south as we go into Tuesday evening again in many of the same areas. So my severe weather confidence for Monday, May 8th right now is medium up here. So if you live in southern Wisconsin, northwestern Indiana, much of Illinois, getting into Iowa and portions of Missouri and back toward the Kansas City region, I will be watching you for a little bit more of a heightened threat for severe weather early next week. This this area could change, but right now I have medium confidence on that occurring with this area in yellow surrounding that. There is low confidence, but it's still possible we see severe weather on Monday all the way down into the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Oklahoma City, Little Rock, Memphis even getting down to places like Shreveport or Jackson, Mississippi as well. And then going into Tuesday, a little farther out, so I have lower confidence right now in exactly where the placement of the severe weather will be. But if you live in any of these areas highlighted, definitely be on high alert going into your Tuesday, May 9th next week. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Right now, the main mode looks to be damaging winds and large hail, but some tornadoes could be possible, especially with some of the finer details we'll have to hash out as we get a little bit closer. Well, if you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates, follow me down below, hit the description and, and follow me on Twitter at hweather420. And I definitely appreciate everybody watching me here this morning. As always, remember to press the like button down below, get me um, as many likes as possible. I definitely appreciate it. And also make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great rest of your week, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.